Here's a quick overview of my experience in DR. I'm going to give everybody a quick tour of my Airbnb. This is the kitchen. I'm coming in just like you can see it. It's really nice. They have all the appliances you need. Here is the table. Really nice setup. It's really, really nice. Sitting area, and it's nighttime, so I really can't show y'all the view, but it's a really, really gorgeous view. You really can see everything. I'm gonna just show y'all. Oh my left eye, sorry. And here's the two bedrooms. Is this bedroom over here? I'm not gonna invite my roommate's space. Don't worry about my bedroom being a little <laughs> not together. I'm trying to get it together before tomorrow. Standing shower. Nice situation. And I think this is a big size bed. Mm -hmm. And that is it. I think I pay, I'm paying, um, I think it's $50 a night. Yeah, it's $50 a night. So really inexpensive and then yeah my dr alamante so she's removing this entire circle right here she's taking this and bringing it to here i don't have none of this baby but naked but naked here's a quick visual of what my my midsection looks like how I walk daily. So I just had my first post op appointment. Everything looks, from what she said, amazing. Um, I had to get a stitch in my arm. I'm with a lipo so it can close effectively. Um, and that's basically it. Today, I feel, I drank some coffee, which I probably shouldn't have had, and baby, it took me down. Um, another side effect that I'm having is a lot of gas, just like constantly burping, constantly. So they prescribed me something for that, but she told me I look amazing. But I don't feel it, but it's part of recovery. So, and I'm constantly um, feeling like I'm dehydrated and I drink, y'all don't even know how much water I drink. You could tell my, how my lips are. Um, it's just part of recovering. My lips, like you would think I haven't had any water or anything wet on my lips and I, Vaseline is eating up my lips, right? Oh, okay. Oh, you think that's gonna work? So, thank God I have this. People don't think I'm ashy. So, now I'm just stuck at home and rest on because I did a lot of moving around today. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Lock that. Boom. Mm -hmm. Close it, please. Close that. Take and this out. Take. Hold that. Pass. Like this. Okay. That empty. Um, in four. 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 Yes. Okay. My very first massage and a look at my body. And then someone had to take a picture of me from the back, child. Good evening, everyone. It is officially day seven. Post op recovery from the many procedures that I've had in Santo Domingo. This is my last night here. When I tell you guys I'm so ready to go home and get in my bed, I can't even find the words to express to you how happy I am that I've made this far. I feel so much better. Day seven is so much better than day one. I'm moving around a lot better. Um, I just feel better. I'm sleeping better. The first couple of nights, you sleep in like little one or two hour increments. And so for the last night or two, I've been sleeping, you know, I've been getting a solid four or five and I just move better and I feel better. I'm just so ready to come home. Um, 
but today I want to talk about the overall decision of having plastic surgery and making sure that you are mentally and physically capable of this elective um, surgery. I first want to say that it's extremely difficult. Well, let me say this. Having surgery is not for the weak. Don't let what you see on the internet, your social media influencers, because what typically happens is they have surgery, they fall off, and then they bounce back, and you just see them with a different body. And that's why it was important for me to show you guys what you truly go through when you when you have this. Yes, we know it's elective. I chose to do it. Nobody has to remind me of that. I totally understand that. I, I get that. But it's still a procedure. It's, it's, it's still a journey that you have to go through to get to the end of results that you are hoping for. Um... It's been hard on me here, mainly because I'm away from my son. Although he don't care, he's 18, he don't, he love the fact that he's able to make his own decisions and I'm not standing over him telling him, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. But that loss of control has been a lot for me. Cause I can't tell him, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. And he lets me know every day. But while I was here, Two people that was important to me, um, or two people that I knew, passed away. Loss of control. I couldn't do anything about it, but just sit here and weep. Um, one of the last persons that passed away, which I want to kind of briefly talk about without going into too much detail. I know a lot of people I posted um, Keisha on my page, and a lot of people assumed that that was one of the four people that I was here with. No, that's not the case at all. Um, the, the, it was four of us, excuse me. The three ladies that I'm here with, we are totally fine. One of them has went back home. She is great. The other two that I'm still here with, we are fine. So I appreciate that outpour. Um, but while I was here, one of my uh, friends, associates, passed away. Um, here in San Domingo, I was not aware that she was here. Um, I just was on scrolling on the internet and seeing and start questioning and um, one of my best friends called and told me and he didn't want to tell me what happened because I'm here. Um, it, it, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it truly, truly, truly messed with me because she passed away her elective surgery in the same city that I'm in. But I want to say this. Before you decide to or, or while you're contemplating going through the motions of, of wanting to do elective surgery, make sure that you are healthy enough to go through this. It's not for everybody. It, it, it's not. If you have under, and I'm not a doctor, I don't have any type of medical background. I'm a Google doctor like the most of us. But make sure your health is at 100%. Make sure that any underlying issues that you have are controlled. Your hemo. Most doctors, you know, look it up if you don't know what hemo is. Most doctors require you to have 11-12 to have procedures. Before you fly out to a country, Go to the doctor, go to your PCP a couple of times to ensure that your hemo is together. And if it's not, if they're telling you that it's not, then don't go behind their back and do what your vanity, your potential vanity wants to be done. Because you run a bigger chance. It's already a chance of something going wrong because it's elective, but you have an underlying health issue raises the stakes. Go risk it. Anemia, diabetes, your weight, those are issues that need to be addressed off top before you decide to travel to another country. Yes, there's a lot of doctors here that will still perform surgeries on you but you being overweight. I don't understand why, but they will. 
it's not the safest thing. If you're willing to risk yourself in doing something like this, make sure you lose 30, 40 pounds. Get to, have a goal weight. You know, I didn't decide to do any of these surgeries until I lost 60, 65 pounds. If you are anemic, you really, 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 really have to make sure that your PCP in the country says that you are healthy enough to have the surgery. I went to the doctor twice, y'all. I went to the doctor two times in September. Looking, because I was looking, I'm not going to lie, I was looking for red flags. Baby, all I need is one red flag to say a nigga don't go. And it was just so unbelievable that everything seemed to be going so right for me. Find a doctor that cares about you more than they care about your money. That is the most important thing. That is the determined. Research your doctor. Research your doctor. My doctor don't didn't give a she didn't give a damn if you flew all the way here, um, set up your hotel. She, baby, when you got here, you did your labs. If they wasn't to her standards, she was sending your she sending your ass home. Baby, go home and lose thirty pounds. Go home and do this, and then come back in six months. You need somebody like that. And although, and excuse me, even though that's, it's a disappointment, trust me. Because especially if you have vanity issues like me, you come here, you expect something, and then they send you home, it pisses you off. But at least you have to look at it like, at least they care enough about me to not just take my money. Because there's a lot of doctors here in United, here in DR, and in United States, they will take your money and don't give a damn about your health issues. Period. And before I go, because I'm going to make a whole video about why I chose the DR versus the United States. I know y'all hear stories about the DR, but it's not the DR. The only thing about the DR that is questionable and that you guys should know is they ban mommy makeovers here, but they don't have people that's regulating that. So although it's banned, they don't have nobody enforcing it. So if a doctor chooses to do it, the doctor chooses to do it, but that it's banned for a reason, research why. My doctor told me there's too many procedures at one time to, my doctor, I talked to her this morning about it. She says too many procedures on the body at one time. She's like, I'll never do your breast, your tummy, your butt, an aggressive lipo, and you're under anesthesia for five or six hours. She was like, no, I'm not doing it. She went, I wanted her to do my breast. She was like, see you next year. Which, which one or two things do you want? Because I'm not doing the three things that you want. And it wasn't, that's it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that my money didn't sway her 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 better judgment her professionalism she's never had a death before and she she's making sure she keeps it like that i just want y'all to I, I, and, I, and it's coming from a person who totally understands wanting to look better wanting to change things having insecurities that you want to to fix baby i'm that person but make sure at any point if I thought that this could have taken my life or if I ain't gonna say that. I ain't I ain't yes I said I ain't gonna say that because we all know elective surgery is risky. But if something would have stopped me, if I had any red flags, if if any of my blood, my lung, my my cardiologist reports came out with something that told me, no, you can't have it, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I want you guys to think about that before you make that decision. Don't let what you want to look like truly, truly, truly intervene in your overall safe, your safety. Go to the doctor. Listen to what your PCP say. Listen to your gut. We all have intuition. We all have intuition. If your gut is telling you stop, don't do it, don't do it. So. I just want to come on here and say that to you guys. Be careful. Um, ask me anything. Um, I'm not, you know, so go have elective surgery.
surgery. I'm just trying to share with you guys what my journey entails. My, my life, my reinvention. It's not for everybody, and nor am I encouraging people to do it. I'm just letting you know what I've, what I've been doing. Um, so, again, thank you guys. Please pray for my travels tomorrow, me and my friends, and I will see you guys. Oh, and another thing, because people keep asking me about my body. Baby, what do you think I'm worried about how I look? All I know is that I don't got the stomach no more. That's it. I haven't tried to take pictures. I ain't worried about none of that stuff. No, not right now. Maybe week two. But week one, I'm just trying to breathe right, rock right, feel better, sleep. Y'all have an amazing day. My chef, my nurse, Glennie Boo, she's on Instagram. Please make sure you get wheelchair assistance. It's been real, Santo Domingo. <laughs>